In today's video, we're going to talk about the quest given to us by the Daedric Prince, Periite, in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Periite is known as the Daedric Prince of Pestilence, among other titles and names. He is said to bless his followers with diseases and is considered a more destructive Daedric Prince. He is often depicted as a four-legged green dragon and may even appear as an apparition of a skeever. He is also able to maintain a calm demeanor when speaking with mortals. Now, to begin this quest, we head to Periite Shrine. This shrine is located east of Breville, near the Imperial Dragon Inn and north of Bedrock Break. Upon arriving, we'll notice that there are five followers of Periite standing around in a circle. Upon closer inspection, they appear to be frozen, and when interacted with, the game gives us a message saying they are unconscious. As once stated in a previous video, this is a great area to train your combat skills. No one is around to witness our crimes, the NPCs don't fight back, and they cannot die. Be very careful, however, not to outlevel yourself, as it can be very easy to level up, but your gear remains a lower tier. Recommended is to level up any minor combat skills, so that way, it doesn't impact your character as much as major skills would. After punching the NPCs enough, we received a quest update saying that something peculiar is going on at this shrine and that we should investigate further. The update also mentions that we need to be at least level 10 to access the rest of this quest. This is when we can go and interact with the Shrine of Periite to receive some information. This one moves. A welcome change. So, mortal, you have found my shrine and you have seen my followers. They are an embarrassment to me. The fools cast a spell in the hopes of summoning me to them. It was prideful and foolish, and it has had its consequences. My followers are trapped between worlds. Their bodies here on this plane, their souls in oblivion. I would have you reunite the bodies and the souls. I will transport you to the plane of oblivion in which they are trapped. Find their souls. When all are collected, I will return you here. Return to me when you are prepared. Now is the time to check our gear and make sure that we're ready for what lies ahead. After completing this quest, I can assure you it's very important to make sure your gear is fully repaired, charged, and that you have the necessary supplies and consumables ready. Once we've gathered the necessary resources, we can interact once more with the shrine. We're instantly teleported to what looks like Mehrunes Dagon's Plane of Oblivion, the Deadlands. However, this is Periite's plane known as the Pits. Here, Periite guards the lowest orders of Oblivion. Very little is known about what the rest of the pits looks like as this realm was completely inaccessible to mortals up until recently. Looking at our compass, we'll notice five green arrows. These are our points of interest for rescuing Periite's followers. The land is one rather large island and from where we spawn, there are three different directions we can head in, all of which lead to at least one of our quest markers. Scattered throughout this plane is a total of 22 to 42 Daedra creatures. We mostly dealt with Flame Atronachs, Scamps, and Clanfair Runts. Unfortunately for me, my best weapons had Fire Enchantments which did not go well against the Atronachs. There's a variety of loot available in the forms of fleshy pod bags, claws, sacks, and hangings. There are also a few extra zones that can be explored while in this realm. The first one is called the Blood Well, which is actually an accessible tower located on the bottom left of the local map. However, there really isn't too much in here other than two Daedric creatures, a blood fountain, and a Magicka essence. Before we get into the other zones, we're nearing our first lost soul. The lost souls appear as the same model as a ghost that we can have a social interaction with in the outside world. The first one we found is Ilvel Romaine. The souls don't offer up much dialogue other than a one-liner related to Periite. Periite, save us! Interacting with them will see them teleported back to Nern, and we will receive a quest update about it. The lost souls seem to react around enemies with them running away in fear, shouting things like look out, or even by attacking the enemies. As mentioned previously, there are two different cave systems that can be entered into. Coincidentally, both are called the Sightless Grotto even though they don't meet up with one another. Looking at this map, A is the Bloodwell which is its own system that does not lead anywhere. 
B and C on the western side of the island are connected and those are the cave systems of the first sightless grotto. D and E located on the eastern side of the island are connected and can help you reach two of the souls by simply taking the cave system. Personally, I found the caves a little less interesting and a lot more constricted than by simply walking around the outside. The sightless grottos can help reach the souls and offer as a detour from the outside, but how much more efficient and useful they are is up for debate. While outside, we can see our enemies, look for smoke in the sky as an indication on where the lost souls are, have better access to the local map, and follow pathways leading to the green arrows. Before doing research on the caves, they seemed more confusing on where to go, rendered ranged attacks useless, and lived up to their name by offering a lack of vision and awareness to enemies and direction. The sightless grotto on the western side of the island contains four danger creatures in its one zone. The eastern side of the island contains five danger creatures in the first zone and five more in the second zone. The unofficial Elder Scrolls pages recommends to collect the souls in this order for the most efficient usage of our time. Number 1 is Ilvel Romain in the bottom left corner or southwestern area of the map by the Bloodwell Tower. Number 2 is Urtius located in the middle left or central western part of the map. Number 3 is K1 located in the top right corner or northeastern part of the map. They can either be reached via the sightless grotto with a little bit of walking, or with a lot of walking to the other side of the island. Number 4 is Marin the Seal located on the far right of the island, or the eastern part of it. We can either take the eastern sightless grotto cave system from Kwan's location, or we can do a little bit of jumping across some rocks to get to their soul. The final soul is that of Miri, whom is located at the bottom of the map or the central southern part. Once all of the souls have been collected, we receive a quest update saying that Periate said he would open a portal back to Nern for us in the center of the island, where we initially came from. Legging it back there, we see a neat looking magical portal that is a lot more inviting than one of Mehrun's Dagon's Oblivion Gates. Activating the portal sends us back to Nern, where we receive a quest update to speak with Periate. The conversation sounds like this. You have returned my followers, mortal. The natural order is restored, and for this, I thank you. Perhaps they have learned the folly of attempting to touch a Daedra Prince. Take this with my blessing. May it bring you order. We're back. Thank Periite. Our time must now be spent in prayer. Perfect order must be achieved. And with that, we're gifted the Daedric Artifact of Spellbreaker. It's a heavy enchanted shield with a 30% of Reflect spell, which is apparently the second most powerful of said enchantment in the entire game. The shield has a unique design, although it is dwarven in nature, and it has similar stats to an Orcus shield but offers slightly more protection and has more durability. With the souls of Periate's followers saved and the Daedric Prince pleased, thus ends the Daedric quest of Periate Shrine.